some bullshit. And what I see is an issue of separating, right, good poll versus bad poll. Yeah. Is that now you can classify a group of people and determine their rights collectively as mm-hmm. a society. Mm-hmm. Because as society, you've collectively decided, mm, that's bad work, right? Yeah. So then what happens is, well, stripping is so closely connected to all these other industries. At what point do rights start to get taken away from people that are adjacent to? Because that's what we're seeing happen on social media. Yeah. It started with sex workers. Then it bled into the pole dance community. Then it bled into the fitness community. And before we knew it, all types of women and transgendered LGBTQ, anyone that was femme identifying, then all became a target as well. Yeah. So it, it causes a ripple effect. If you start to demoralize and, and, or, or say, like, oh, that group has no morals, so therefore we're going to treat them X, Y, and Z, and then everyone can, condones that behavior. So what's happening in Nevada, if that is condoned, that's abs- abs- absolute bullshit, and it's going to start to seep into other states. It's going to be a ripple effect. It's going to set the bar for how those women are allowed to be treated by clients. It's going to set the bar for yeah. how those women are allowed to be treated by their banks, how they're allowed to be treated by their... But, but let's cut to also, not just those women, but women who choose to dress also similarly to those women, yeah. who now, if you dress like them, you must be like them, and therefore will treat you with the same lack of respect, respect. Yeah. and whatever, because... You dress like that, and yeah. only bad girls dress like that. Yeah. So now you can't even dress like a slut, um, because then you're categorized in this group of people that are bad, and you're treated like shit. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that's my rant yeah, about that. Yeah, I don't that. like it. Yeah, I don't no, like it. No, I don't, don't like it either. Don't right? agree? Yeah, I don't agree at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it really um, irks me. It's something I think about all day long yeah 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 so thank you because it really allowed me to go down yeah, that get, in it. Hole, get it out get it out girl. yeah and i think a lot of people need to know about what's happening in nevada right now yeah. i'm actually we're getting ready to write a letter Definitely. to some people <laughs> um excuse me hello no 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 you're not doing this oh man okay i keep refraining from lifting my arms up because every time i do my shirt comes up and then my nipples pop out hello Hello. i'll just stop and this isn't the one we're gonna do the next one topless not this one yeah well maybe i don't know i have to discuss that behind the scenes with my producers yeah we might have to do that one for like donations or something yeah some kind of charity event for sure yes maybe to the some kind of charity event for sure deaf children or the nevada nevada (laughs) girls either one maybe both all right, so um, also really quickly, I just want to touch on your social worker. You, yeah. You're like, and how much work do you do currently in the social work world? Are you like really immersed in that or is that like a phase in your life? Not not so <laughs> much now. So when I, fir- when I first moved out to California, I was taking, I was working for an agency. I was taking clients. Mm. Uh, I, so I, I am um, LCSW, which is a licensed clinical social worker. So that means that I was doing... So there's social workers that are caseworkers. So, you, you know, in media, movies, things mm-hmm. like that, what you assume is social, like for family services and things mm-hmm. like that. What I was doing, um, when you get a master's in social work and then you also go your clinical route, that means that you're more of a, a therapist. So I can legally diagnose people, but I can't prescribe the medication. Um, I could also open my own private practice to do therapy. I work in a community that is not a very wealthy community, so it seems unethical for me to do that. So I am in the very, very baby early stages of starting my own nonprofit. Oh, shit. Um, I didn't know that. You didn't know this? No. Oh, um, it's called Unspoken Expression, (coughs) and it will be a space where I'll backtrack a little bit. So I noticed that my deaf friends kept asking me, can you come to this dance class with me? Can you come to this yoga class with me? Mm. Um, because it's not accessible. And so right. I go pro bono just for, you know. Uh, so I realized there's a lack of, again, culture and art and somewhere where they can practice these ways of expression, dancing, mm. poetry, painting, movie making, all these nice. things. So it's called Unspoken Expression. It would basically be a space where 
deaf teens and middle schoolers would be able to come and I also I wouldn't be hearing Savior so I have a Rolodex of deaf directors actors dancers nice. all these people I would have them come teach the classes for the deaf teens mm -hmm. um, so that they could have access to not only a way of expression and a way to practice that expression in an accessible space yeah but also deaf role models to see Amazing. oh I can be a director oh I can be an oh, actor shit. I can be a dancer and then within that I would incorporate social work aspects. So play therapy with younger groups, middle schoolers. Would we do more art project, things like that? We wouldn't sit down and be like, how are you feeling today? Right. Um, more play therapy based. I would run a girls group because that's super important just for, it's a very small community. So misinformation can be spread really quickly. And it, I definitely have a soft spot for making sure all the women and, sure. you know, are safe and understand consent and understand things like that. So my next step as far as anything social work is definitely to in, to start this nonprofit, possibly attached to another nonprofit in the beginning, Yeah. but incorporate through just running it also therapy-based practices nice. um, because they are a vulnerable population, especially in Los Angeles. It's a lot of um, people who are undocumented, people that are have yeah. very low like not a lot of resources and things so you can't if you're going to come at it from a social work perspective you can't just provide a service you also have to have relationships and connect with other people mm. that provide services to create a full supportive experience nice wow that's amazing you're that's like my... literally changing lives <laughs> no but i'm excited about yeah, it that's we have a logo so cool. we have okay. some merch but we just got to get a, we got to have to get a building and, and figure out transportation and also have to wait till after Corona because we have to wait till coronavirus. Corona is over. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. This exactly. Corona party. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you. Want to be fabulous just like these strippers? Pay attention. It's stripper tips. So my stripper tip is for ladies or gentlemen or whoever you identify going through, going to the bathroom in a crowded club Ooh. what do you do so i have found because i've had i've done it right when i have to go to the bathroom in the club and i have my heels on people tend to move a little bit quicker mm -hmm. because they're like here's an amazon coming through mm -hmm. get out of the way mm -hmm. when i put on my sneakers in the exact same club the exact same people who were just like you were amazing 10 seconds ago they do not move when I'm in my normal shoes and my normal clothes trying to go to the bathroom. Got it. So I'll, I'm going to try to explain it for the listeners, not for... So if you just do like a little Beyonce as you go through a crowd. Okay, she's kind of fist just pumping twerk, her fist. Like, like do a little like, little, like a little just back and forth. Just a little and like... like... And you smile at people as you go through, right? You don't okay. just do it aggressively. So you're basically doing like a mini dance. Yeah, just, just do a mini... And arms. you can dance however you want. Maybe you do a little... Maybe, maybe you just do go like little, this. Maybe you can raise the maybe roof. Maybe a little I can't raise the roof right now because my nipples raise will pop out. Raise the roof is out. great. All right. Pick a dance move. The point is pick a dance move, okay. whatever dance move you feel comfortable with, and then make it fun as you go through. So you go, okay. hey, hey, like, look at people, yeah, high five dancing. them, you know, past Corona. Yeah. But like, look at people, <laughs> high five them, and they will gladly spread the seas. Like, right, they will move right, out of right. the way so that you can go to the bathroom or get out of That's the concert really good. or go to the, you know, wherever, go to the bar, whatever you need to do. Yeah. If you make it fun, do a dance move, smile at them and be like, yeah, like, almost like we're all in it together. Right. They will gladly Amazing. part the seas for I'm you. I'm definitely going to try that one. You're That's welcome. hot. Yeah, okay. Get ready for our rapid fire question round. It's time for four for one. Okay, bud, here we go. Four for one time. <clears throat> what is your reaction to unsolicited dick pics? Fuck no. Ew. No. That's your reaction? Blocked. Blocked. Why? Blocked. Huh. For me, it kind of depends on the pic. All right. <laughs> Sexting. Yes or no? Definitely. Ugh. <clears throat> if you could watch any two people make out, who would it be? Oh, God. Can you think faster? Yeah, yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying. Uh, Gal Gadot, for sure. And uh, Brittany Murphy. Who's Gal Gadot? Who's Gal Gadot? She's Wonder Woman. <laughs> I think I should know that. <laughs> Last one. <laughs> What's your favorite thing to do during quarantine? Hang out with my fucking roomies. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, my roomies. It's so fun. We get we get to actually hang out. Like normally, I will say this because we all moved in here real quick. 
you know, normally we'd all be at a job or someone would be at someone's house or at a friend's thing. No, we get to actually bond and sort of create a family during yeah. quarantine. So I'm and really lucky. we have time to integrate cats as well. A hundred percent. It's been so it's much so trauma. Dramatic. So much trauma. Cats over here. Like, to the death fight. Yeah. Yeah. But they're doing better. There's yeah. been progress. They are doing better. Yeah. Um, okay, so tell everyone how we can find out more information, how my fans can follow you and be your fans. Oh, how sweet. Yeah. I would be super grateful. Um, on Instagram, my handle is the, T-H-E dot B-L-A-I-K-E. So the dot Blake with an I. I have a YouTube as well under Caroline Blake. Um... Yeah, and that's that's that's, it? that's pretty much the okay. way to contact that's me, fine. Instagram and YouTube. Tight. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much again for coming all this way. Uh, go around the corner. No yeah. problem. Anytime. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right, guys. That's been our episode. Um, if you have any comments or questions, always please email us. We would love to hear what you think about the things that you hear on the show, even if you disagree with them. Um, you know, I don't, I don't suggest that I'm always right, uh, or that my guests are always right. So if you hear something contradictory, please, uh, email us and let us know and, uh, follow the, all the instructions at the end of this episode. You'll hear them. <laughs> if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can email us at yes, a stripper podcast at gmail.com. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at yes, a stripper podcast. And you can catch the show on YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, anywhere that you can find podcasts. We hope you tune in next week. I've been your host, A.M. Davies. See you soon.